Hi, everyone. Welcome to AICT Asia PCR 2021. I'm Dr. Aaron Wong, Senior Consultant and Head of Cardiology and Director of Interventional Cardiology, National Heart Center, Singapore. With me today is one of the most skillful and experienced interventional cardiologists from Singapore Tan Tok Seng Hospital. Dr. Fahim Jafari is a Senior Consultant in Interventional Cardiology. And until recently, he is also the Director of Nuclear Cardiology and Cardiac CT Services a truly all-round cardiologist. Thank you, Aaron. Our discussion topic today is telescope guide extension catheter in complex coronary interventions. If you asked me what is the most important recent innovation that had helped me to improve my procedure success rate, I would definitely say it's a guide extension catheter. It is a very simple concept and device, but extremely versatile in its function. Before the introduction of guide extension catheter, there were many occasions that the procedures uh, would have failed because we weren't able to deliver uh, the equipment down the vessels due to severe toxicity or calcification. The availability of guide extension catheter has changed the playing field for complex lesion, especially in the area of uh, transradial intervention when guide support may not be as good as transfemoral approach. The session objective today is to understand the advantages and functions of guide extension catheter in complex PCI cases, and to discuss some clinical scenarios where the guide extension catheter has made PCI procedure simpler and safer. To start the discussion, Dr. Fahim is going to present one of his cases. So this is a relatively simple, but at the same time, fairly complex case, and I thought it would highlight some important features related to the use of guide catheter extensions. And so, you know, this is a 70 year old man with hypertension and diabetes, you know, the usual thing presented with chest pain and a non-STEMI. Um, and as is the usual case in our practice, we took him to the cath lab. That's the right coronary artery, um, you know, some mild or moderate stuff, but nothing critical. Um, and the, the, the LAD was clearly very significantly diseased. Uh, you can see heavily calcific. Um, and, uh, you know, almost a 90% lesion in the mid LED, and that's the sort of spider view. Um, and so, you know, with, faced with this, you know, I wonder, you know, Aaron, how would you approach this and how would you deal with this in your, in your practice? Yeah, indeed, Fahim, this is a, a very complex case. Uh, we can see the LED lesion is long and calcified and also involved a few moderate size uh, diagonal branches. I think lesion preparation in this case is vital. Uh, for stent delivery and uh, uh, expansion to improve long-term outcomes in this patient. I would first use uh, NC balloons to test the ground and have a very low threshold to perform atherectomy. So how did you proceed with this complex case? Yeah, so I think you nailed it on, on the money there. So essentially, you know, we, we went right radial approach as the, as the usual in our practice, uh, six French XB guide. Um, and after wiring, it took a one five by 12 balloon and it just in wooden cross. So, you know, the idea of using a non-compliant balloon wasn't even there. We couldn't even cross with a small compliant balloon. And so we went ahead and then did rotational atherectomy. And with a one to five bar, it took six runs before we finally crossed this. Uh, and after crossing, as is not unexpected, you can see on the left side, um, you know, the once we replace the wires, the flow is down, the ST segments are up. Uh, and then after a fair bunch of vasodilators and some ballooning with a two-hour balloon, um, you know, the flow is some is improved to almost close to normal. And so at this point, we're ready to stand. And so we then go ahead and take a two to five by 38 millimeter stand, a very trackable on extent. And you can see then, as you can see over here in the panel, the stent sort of pretty much stops in the middle mid vessel. Now, remember, this is a calcified vessel that has already been ablated and dilated, and yet, uh, you know, a very trackable stent fails to cross. So at this point, then our options were to either balloon more or do other stuff, and we decided to then go with a guide catheter extension. And you can see now on the left side, here's the guide catheter extension at the mouth of the, at the uh, proximal vessel. And we then take a 2-0 balloon, which you can see here, and take it distally to the place where we were gonna put the stent and then we dilate, sort of inflated the balloon and essentially fixed the system. 
And over this system then advanced the guide catheter extension to go beyond the spot where the resistance to the stent was. And you can see that the telescope tracked beautifully over this balloon, a tour balloon inflated in the spot where we were going to uh, implant the stent anywhere. So there was no loss uh, by dilating there. Uh, and you can see that the, 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 the telescope tracked very nicely. After the telescope was positioned distally, then the stent literally flew through. And you can see in a second, this is the same stent passing very easily to the distal landing zone. And then this is an important point. We then pull the guide catheter extension back and then take an injection, but a very gentle injection, because remember the pressures are usually damped over here and you don't want to uh, you know, inject too hard, which could then lead to dissection and other things. So we went ahead and um, you know, uh, positioned our stent and then deployed. And after deployment of the stent, more ballooning and ex another, an additional stent proximally into the left main, post dilation. And this is our final result. And you can see that's a fairly excellent result, good expansion, nicely deployed stent. Uh, and you can see the, the before picture on the smaller panel on the right side. This is another view, the aerocranial view, nice expansion. Um, you know, good deployment of the stent and the before is in the smaller panel uh, on the right side. And that's another view, the, the spider view. So in summary then, you know, calcific disease is a real problem and we deal with this every day. It's a challenge to stent delivery, stent expansion, device delivery, and calcium modification is an integral part of modern interventional cardiology practice. And guide catheter extensions have substantially changed the equation and allow you to overcome these device delivery issues across calcific disease. Of course, it requires careful technique, advancing, withdrawing, and those kind of things. And hopefully we'll be able to talk more about this um, you know, as, as the, the session moves forward. So thank you very much. And I'll be happy to answer any questions from this point onwards. Um, let me just ask, without the guide extension catheter, do you think you will be able to achieve uh, such a good result or finish it um, uh, um, sooner? I think that's a very good point. So finishing it sooner, absolutely not. I mean, there are other things. We could have gone and dilated more, taken cutting balloons, do all kinds of other stuff, maybe taken a bigger burr and, and ablated. Uh, but, you know, you can see that the, the guide catheter extension just made it simple, quick and easy uh, and relatively painless. So I think that uh, the answer is that I would probably not have been able to do it so well and so easily uh, without the guide catheter extension. Thank you, Fahim, uh, for sharing this uh, very um, uh, important educational uh, case. So, um, Dr. Fahim, can you tell us at um, what situations that you would ask for a guide extension catheter during the procedures? Yeah, so I, I, that's a good question, Aaron. I think that the way I look at guide catheter extensions, I look at it in three ways you need to use it. You either need it for crossing or navigation or highlighting. Now, now what do I mean by that? Crossing is sometimes you've got a really tight lesion and you need to get something across. <clears throat> For example, a very, very severely calcific, severely narrowed lesion, and you need a lot of brute force to get a balloon to go across. That's where the guide catheter extension can be invaluable. Uh, sometimes you need a guide catheter extension to you to cross a device like, uh, for example, a, a shockwave IVL. So that's crossing. The more common use of guide catheter extension is navigation. And what I mean by that is using the guide catheter extension to navigate across hurdles. So for example, calcific disease, as you saw in the case I just presented, tortuous disease, sometimes you need a guide catheter extension to sort of you know, uh, circumnavigate those hoops and loops before you then can deliver devices distally. And then sometimes, uh, less commonly, but sometimes you need the guide catheter extension to navigate to get devices like road ablation across, for example, um, you know, big curves, it's, for example, in the right coronary artery, so that you can safely ab ablate the distal vessel. So that's navigation. The third is, which is the less common, but nevertheless important use of guide catheter extension is highlighting. And what I mean by that is sometimes you have an osteal left main stent and you don't want to bang your guide against it. And so putting a guide catheter extension over the wire can just help you you know, get your images and not have to damage the stent. Or sometimes you want to save contrast. You can, you can put a guide catheter extension in the distal right and again, inject small amounts of contrast and save, save on dye. And then the third situation, which I've faced recently in, uh, is an anomalous vessel, like an anomalous right coronary artery, and you can't get a guide to sit. 
But once you get a wire across, you can use the guide catheter to extend your guide and essentially then allow you to complete the case. So these are sort of the main, you know, uh, crossing, navigating, and highlighting are the three areas where I find that the guide catheter extension is very useful. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Fahim. A great uh, summary of the uh, situation where a uh, guide extension catheter can really help. Um, one additional use of guide extension catheter in complex uh, uh, PCI is during a, a complex C a CTO intervention. It is to use it for a retrograde wire externalization after a successful reverse cut. The Chinese actually called it the active greeting technique, AGT, whereby the uh, guide extension catheter is inserted deeply, integrally into the CTO segment uh, to receive the retrograde wire. Apparently, this is a routinely used after successful reverse cut in many places, which greatly improved the success rate of wire externalization and also reduced uh, uh, procedure time. Yeah. Uh, Fahim, can you also share with us um, um, some tips and tricks of using uh, this device? Yeah, so I think the important things to think about is that you know, your guide cat extension is your friend, so you, you, you don't force it. When you advance the guide catheter, you remember that it is a device that can scrape the artery and cause dissections. And so you want a smooth transit. And so if it doesn't go over the wire smoothly, which it often doesn't by virtue of the nature of the artery that you're trying to get it in in the first place, using a balloon is very useful. And as you saw in the case I presented, a balloon catheter can act as a nice rail to get it across. So that's an important uh, tip. Sometimes you can use balloon assisted tracking, which means inflate a balloon at the tip of the guide catheter, half in and half out. And that allows the guide catheter, the, the, the guide catheter extension to then find its way down the vessel. Um, I think it's important to understand that, you know, be, you need to be aware of points of resistance and when there's resistance, you don't force it because one of the things young operators do is they force the guide catheter extension too much, uh, thinking that it's a balloon. It's not a balloon, it's a mini guide and that can then push everything else, push everything out. And I think one final point is that when you have a guide catheter extension deep in the artery uh, and you have to inject, which sometimes you do need to, to opacify the artery, look at stent positioning and so on and so forth, your injection must be very gentle because you can easily dissect the artery because the pressures are often either damped or ventricularized. So you have to be extra careful for those uh, of that uh, before, you know, uh, so that you don't end up with a complication. And what are the, some of the precautions, um, as you mentioned some already, um, when using uh, this guide extension? Yeah, so those, those are kind of most of it. Most of it you know, both the, those are the precautions. And it, the most important precaution, as I said, is, um, you know, don't force it. Watch where you are. Watch the pressures. If, you, if you're very ventricularized, don't inject. Don't inject too, too hard. And again, uh, let the guide catheter extension find its way. And sometimes you will find that it can only go half the way you would like it to, and then you just have to accept that and then move on and then do whatever you need to do to get your devices across. Um, because as I said, if you force things, you may end up causing more damage and then you have to chase that. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Yeah, the other important thing is to make sure that the devices are compatible within the uh, this extension catheter because uh, it will yeah. not be allowed two balloons or one balloon, one stent, yeah. Absolutely, um, and so, so sometimes two wires are the problem. Uh, you know, you can't have two wires, uh, like a one wire out and one wire in. So if you have two wires in an artery and you want to put a guide catheter extension, you know, it can be an issue. And the other thing is that when you uh, insert the stent, you have to be very careful at the entry port that sometimes it may get caught at the entry port and then the stent may dislodge. Yeah, they have to be very careful. Yes. Quite true, yeah. Um, there are a few brands of uh, guide extension catheter available in the market. Is there any particular features that make you prefer one guide extension uh, catheter over another? I think that the, the newer generation extension uh, guide catheter extensions are more flexible, more trackable. You know, telescope being one example. I mean, they so so I think they offer the advantage of being softer and they find their way down the tortuosity or the complexity of the artery more easily. So I tend to use some of the newer ones now. Um, I think that one other situation where, you know, if, you, if you're actually going to do OCT, um, you know, one thing about telescope is that you can actually uh, do an OCT of, of osteal lesions, let's say, let's say osteal right or osteal left main, 
because the OCT can see through it. So those are some of the features that make me tend to use uh, a bit more of the newer uh, generation guide cathode extensions, uh, telescope being one of them. Today, we are honored to have uh, Dr. Fahim with us here to discuss about guide extension catheter in complex PCI. We see a great case example by him where in situation of poor guide support or difficult and uncrossable lesion, guide extension catheter greatly improved the success rate. It is not only useful in anti-grade PCI, but in complex retrograde PCI, the uh, AGT technique used guide extension catheter to facilitate wire externalization and shorten procedure time. We heard also from Fahim the tips and tricks of advancing guide extension catheter deep in the vessels and also the importance of knowing the compatibility of the equipment and the guide extension catheter. The telescope is the third guide extension catheter entered the market, at least in Singapore, and it has some improved features compared to the earlier available brand, uh, such as softer tips and um, uh, longer uh, entry port to uh, reduce the chance of device being caught at the transition zone. I hope you have learned more about guide extension catheter in this session and incorporate this simple but yet versatile device in your daily practice for complex PCI. I'm certain that if used correctly, it will improve your success rate. May not be true for skilled operator, but will definitely make your procedure faster and safer. Thank you. Thank you.